Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining this webinar. Um, it's not going to be a normal webinar this time, which is therefore usually based on a presentation and then a short question and answer. What we're going to do this time is we're going to talk to current members of the board of EES because, as you might know, we are at election time this year. Uh, there will be a new board of directors of the EES Uh, which is open at present and we decided to have a talk to board members um, ask them a few questions about their experience on the board which may help people if they're deciding to put themselves forward as a as a member of the board so Anna can you introduce our board members we've then got a few questions that we're going to ask them Thank you, Alistair. Uh, I would like to welcome you once again. Uh, today with us are our board members, Henry Jensen, Konstantin, Konstantinos Milonas, and Katrin Steinberg. Our board members will share their experiences working in the EIS board and some for a few years. So we will ask our board members a question and at the end you will get a chance to ask your questions. Um, uh, my first question uh, will be to Henriz. Um, Henriz, you have done two terms of four years as a board member. What have been your main experiences and what have you learned about EIS and how it operates? Yes, hi, good morning all. Um, yes, indeed, four years for me on the board now. and. Uh, well, I think for me, what was a very good thing the first year when I joined the board, we had a strategy meeting because we see now that uh, especially the Aquaculture Europe conferences, they're well, moving from a few hundred participants to a thousand or even more than 2,000 people. Uh, and that involves quite a bit of well, rethinking on, on how we want to uh, uh, shape the conferences uh, in terms that we keep the quality high and but also the risks uh, low of course there are some financial implications of getting bigger as well so the strategy meetings that gave me kind of a kickstart in the uh, in my first term as a board and uh, that was a very nice way because we had a uh, after that we had this strategy to, to work on and uh, well, partly that was the Aquaculture Europe conference. On the other hand, it was uh, how can we create more value for our members, for example, in terms of all well, webinars like this or the thematic groups and so on. And um, well, I think your second question was about what I learned. Well, what I've seen is that the DAS organization is a very well-run organization. In A good four years, and uh, well, I hope I'm still there. Can you still hear me, Anna? Yeah, now I can hear you. Yes, sorry. Okay. Yeah, well, I think I'm not sure, but I think I got, well, once I was kicked out of the the, the web. Uh, I was just saying it. It has been a very good four years. It has been interesting to working with. Uh, well the board members coming from different areas around your different expertises and while well, trying to build on this network where all stakeholders within the aqua industry can uh, can hook on to mm -hmm. okay thank you Anis. um dinos i have a question for you a mandate one term is two years on the board of the year um, you've just completed your first term and I'd like to find out why did you submit your candidate to be a member of the board? Can you repeat the question? I only heard until uh, a term is two years. I lost you after that. Okay, um, so you are now finishing your first term. Can you share with us why you decided to submit your candidature to be a member of the board? Okay, sure. Well, um, as I indicated in my uh, uh, application for candidature, um, what I would like for us to be is to be in the forefront of uh, both scientific but also regulatory developments in the sector. I think that EAS uh, has to have a, a say in how um, uh, the strategic development of aquaculture is, uh, is implemented. 
uh, and that should be based on solid science and sustainable expansion. And of course, effective governance is, is part of it. So this is the reason I wanted to join in order to encourage this and in order to support this. And uh, to do this, I believe that um, the tool for, uh, uh, for us to, to achieve this is, of course, to have an expanded uh, membership so that it will go to all uh, aspects of the, uh, of the sector. And to do that, uh, the primary, primary tool is the, uh, uh, the annual conference, which has to be, uh, has to maintain its multidisciplinarity. Uh, but it has to be serious science uh, that will uh, 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 contribute to the scientific development. It has to be uh, uh, to the point that the, the sector, the uh, technicians and the, uh, um, the people working in the sector will be interested in attending so that the science can uh, be conveyed to the, to the industry. And it has to be relevant also to the consumer and the processing field. So, uh, these are the reasons that I, I wanted to join to encourage this uh, this uh, uh, extrovert attitude and uh, focus on scientific quality for the meetings for the EAS. Can you hear me? Yes, Anna. We we maybe yeah, you have a question for Kat. Huh? I have yes. comments from some people that they, uh, the sound quality is bad, especially for me. So I will try to uh, look again at my settings. In the meantime, maybe Anna, you have a question for Kat. Yes, I do. Uh, so Kat, uh, you've been the first ES student representative elected to the ES board of directors. Uh, why a formal place for a student on the ES board? Um, well, we did have an EAS student group board for several years before. Um, mm -hmm. It was really good and we were able to organize the student group in a very, very good manner and everybody um, who has done this since I think they started 2005 has done a very, very good job. But we realized that um, for lots of decisions, um, we sometimes had the feeling that the students were left out a little bit. So we were trying to get a proper place on the EAS board, um, which we managed two years ago. Um, and since, yeah, since then, I've been the student representative on the board. And I think it has been very good and very beneficial for the student group to have a direct say in um, board decisions and have a direct and full place in the board. Yes, that's true. Um, and also, you did implement a few really good things for the students. Uh, and thank you for that. Um, also, my next question would be, uh, what has been your experiences as the student representative? Oh, it has definitely been a great experience. I got to work with a lot of motivated students together, especially to organize the workshop. Um, and everything basically surrounding the conference but we also had a meeting with the national coordinators in May I think last year in Sterling which was mm -hmm. really great um, everybody was really motivated to do something for the year together for aquaculture students all over Europe so that's really great and then for me personally it was very interesting to get more insights into board decisions and into general conference and, and to understand all the details that you have to keep in mind when you organize a big conference like that. That was really, really interesting. Thank you, Kat. Okay, great. So basically, Kat has been our first student representative on the board. We have three different types of, of uh, ballots, if you like, for the board. One is for um, the president-elect, so people can vote directly for their future president. The second one is for a board member position. There are five posts of, of board members. And then the third is now for the student representative. So my, let's say my call would be amongst our student members, amongst our, certainly our national coordinators. It would be wonderful to have uh, several candidates for this post of the student representative on the board of VES.
One thing that board members, all board members, are asked to do is to, to promote the objectives of EES and also membership of EES in their countries. We've seen membership increase uh, certainly quite radically over the last year or so since it became free of charge for students and also for retired persons. And now we have a promotional membership for a period of one year for people that come to our Aquaculture Europe events for the first time, but that register as non-members. So for each of you in turn, maybe Enri's first, then Kat and Dinos, um, what, what have been other uh, objectives with regard to membership or decisions that the board has made over the last two years that you feel to be especially important? Yes, thank Maybe you. Maybe Henry's first? Yes, I can take it first. Um, well, membership is one thing, I think, and uh, for me still uh, the, the heart of the, the EIS actually is the Aquaculture Europe conferences. And I think over the past years we've made quite some, some decisions there. Uh, some are visible for, for the members as well in better integration between the industry and the scientific parts. For example, the industry forum last year. Um, but also some which are a bit less visible for uh, for the members, but which are vital for the organization. So formalization of certain uh, processes uh, for, well, we had quite a bit of discussions on, on the quality of the scientific conferences, but also on the other hand, the risk side of it. And I think there we've made some, uh, yeah, some important decisions as well. Over to you, Kat. Okay. Um, I think from my side, um, one of the big decisions that we made that I really enjoyed is the introduction of the webinars. We actually started that in the student group I think 2017, we had a first trial run on Facebook, um, trying those webinars as an additional benefit for members throughout the year. Um, and we were really happy when now basically you as a core organization took this over and managed to organize this in a way more structured way. And I think it's very beneficial to have these um, benefits that go all year round and not only during the conference time, which obviously is the most important time for us as an organization and also for members but to have these additional benefits over the year. Really good. Thanks, Kat. And Dinos? Uh, I think uh, Ernest uh, mentioned exactly my response. I think that the, the major thing that the, uh, the ad has done to increase uh, the participation of people both in the meetings and in the uh, and eventually in the membership is uh, is the effort uh, put into the organization of the annual meetings. Uh, first of all, the seriousness of the scientific content, uh, the type, the the variety of the scientific content, uh, the relation to the industry, the industry, the industry forums. There are many uh, sessions related specifically to, to production and farmers. Um, the, um, the fair also is very important because many people go to see uh, what new equipment, what new services are available, which in, in the last uh, three, four years, I think uh, there's a boom in uh, companies coming out to support the, uh, the industry further than the, the, the traditional uh, sea cages, nets, and, and feed companies. You will start seeing more and more uh, uh, high-tech companies coming in. So I think the effort uh, put it by the ES uh, in organizing a really, really serious scientific team, but also in that for the industry, a relevant uh, meeting has done uh, uh, the brunt of the uh, of the work in making this. Uh, 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 meeting uh, relevant and very important for people to attend and eventually uh, translate it into the, the membership. Okay, thank you, Dinos. Um, indeed, the Aquaculture Europe events are the big event of the year for us. And as Kat said as well, we're trying to increase networking throughout the rest of the year with the webinars and also now with our podcasts and the services that are available, of course, to members online. But um, 
This year, of course, is a particularly special one. And we're seeing this spring with so many events being cancelled. Um, and that's likely to be case even up to the summer. At present, all, is, all systems are go for Cork. We are maintaining our end of September date. The only way in which we might not be able to do that is if we are instructed to do so by the Irish government. But at the moment, things are on track. Our planning is going forward. One thing we have done is to extend the deadline for abstract submission, which was at May 1st. And now, of course, we've got it back one month until the 1st of June. So giving you more time. So thank you for those answers with regard to decisions that the board has made. Um, but then there's this question about timing, Anna. Yes. Uh, so one thing that may put people off is that they think that being a board member will take too much of their time. Uh, for each of you in turn, uh, what be your reply to them and how does the board work? Did you hear my question? Okay. I'll, uh, I can, yes, yes, I did. I, I, that was my concern also at the beginning when I uh, when I started thinking and entertaining the possibility of uh, of applying for for um, a board membership. But I think the the workload is not uh, is not heavy at all. Uh, thank God, most of the uh, decisions are taken uh, uh, through discussions in the uh, through email and interaction. So. Um, you don't need to dedicate a lot of time to go to meetings. We have two meetings a year, uh, which are quite uh, adequate to address all, all issues. And uh, um, I think the workload is uh, is not uh, heavy at all. And if you like to to be involved in things and you like to have a role and to have a say in what uh, in how. Uh, um, the ass uh, uh, develops and how the aquaculture industry progresses. I think it's a very good uh, uh, opportunity and it's an excellent opportunity for uh, people to uh, network and uh, promote their, their selves uh, into other uh, consortia, research consortia or other positions and other, um, uh, and other uh, functions. So I think it's a great uh, opportunity for everybody and it's not heavy, I think. No, I'd like to agree with you, Dinos. It's, uh, the time involved is, is not massively. So there's one meeting which is usually connected to the Aquaculture Europe conferences. So that takes you a day more. And then there usually is a two day meeting, uh, somewhere, uh, in springtime. And otherwise it's either done through Skype or email. Um, yeah. So there is some time involved, of course, as it is always, but it's not a massive load of, uh, of work. Yeah. For me, um, it was a sim I had this similar question when I started, obviously, um, no one could answer that for the student representative because there was no other student representative before. Um, I do regularly have to check the email that goes to students, but it's basically up to me how much time I spend on that and um, how much time I spend on sending newsletters to students um, and those interactions. So some weeks, um, there's some more time, some weeks there's less. Obviously, um, you do need a bit more time before the conferences um, in order to organize the student workshop, spotlight award, reception, all those kind of things. But we already have a great network of students and there's so much support from the students coming in. Um, so I wouldn't say that that should be something to hold you back on putting yourself forward to be a student representative on the board. Okay, thank you all three of you for that. Um, we are going to open up for questions from those people that are listening into this uh, webinar. So please do uh, ask your question. One thing I have to ask you all is, as I said at the beginning, we have an open call now for candidates. So any EES member can put themselves forward to be a candidate for the board. And that deadline is coming up rather soon. Um, if I'm an EES member and I'm considering putting myself forward, but I'm still hesitating, very quickly, the three of you, what would be your advice to me? I would say go for it. Yeah. That was quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. I think it's a great 
Okay, so and and Henry, I think you're you're. If I heard you correctly, it was the same thing. So all three of you just saying basically, yes, do it, go for it. And uh, what's the the worst thing that can come out is that you'll get elected, right? <laughs> Maybe then it's a good place for us to open up to any questions that participants may have for us. Um, you can type those as a message, or you can basically say to Anna, "Okay, I have a question." Um, and and then tell us who you'd like to ask your question to. Can you? Uh, apologies, I did a small mistake right now. Um, yeah, we got a message to say that the session was over, but we are still here. We um, so okay. if you want to ask a question, don't just unmute yourself. Yeah. Anna is going to coordinate the Q and A. So just message to Anna that uh, you have a question, or simply type your question in the chat box. Kat, I wanted to um, to ask you something. So, as a student representative, you ask the students what they would like to get before the yes yes board member. Or can you tell us a bit more about it? Well, I try to communicate as much as possible with the students. Obviously, it's not always possible to get in contact with everyone. But we have this network of national coordinators or NCs, and I do send them emails. Well, I can't really say regularly, but something like every three, four, five weeks, depending on um, if there's something to communicate or not. And then depending um, on their feedback, I try to take that into um, board discussions as much as possible. So um, I usually do get some quite good and interesting answers and points of views. Obviously, there's also um, stuff that we have tried before and before and that comes up every time. Um, but um, it's quite good interaction with the students generally. Thank you, Kat. Um, it seems that so far we don't have any other questions uh, for you. Uh, so please, if you, any of uh, participants, if you would like to ask uh, a question to our board members, uh, please ask now. Otherwise, we will finish this uh, webinar. Okay, well, we'll give you one minute or so if you want to have a question. If not, I can explain now the next steps. As I said earlier, the deadline for candidates for the board is coming up very quickly now. Um, we hope that this discussion might have been useful if you're thinking about being a candidate. Um, what happens next is that the candidatures are compiled by the EES Secretariat and we have an elections committee, that's the current president, the president-elect and the two last past presidents who basically have to approve the candidates. We then do voting online, so all EES members have the chance to vote once for the president-elect, for the board member, and for the student representative of their choice. That voting online is open for a period of about three weeks, and it'll happen from about the end of April, towards the end of April. The results are compiled for that, and finally, the new board is presented to the General Assembly of the EES for approval, and that General Assembly meeting will be taking place in Cork um, at the end of, of September. So I don't see any other questions coming in. Anna, do you have more? No, I don't have any any other questions. Okay, so in that case then I'd like to thank people for ah, okay, we have uh, two questions coming from Italy, Anna. Oh, yes, uh one question from a student from Italy, uh, he has two of them. So the membership fee will be free the next year too for the students. The answer to that is simple. Yes, uh, membership for students and retirees is free of charge. What happens though is the membership is for a 12-month period and students need to 
um, give us proof of their student um, identity. So each 12 months, you will be asked to renew for your free student membership, and you will be asked again to provide us with proof that you are still a student. Once you have stopped being a student, then your next renewal after that will be for a kind of uh, paid membership of EES. And then also I can see your second question about the efficiency of the job vacancies section. We post vacancies when we receive them. Um, and normally the deadline for those vacancies is very close. We generally receive them literally a week before or two weeks before the deadline. We post them as soon as we have them. Uh, some are for job vacancies. Others are for internships. It's not easy to find an internship nowadays. Um, it's not easy being at the right place and at the right time. Um, one of the ways in which we are trying to facilitate that process is through, for example, our Adopt a Student Mentoring Program, whereby um, if you have a specific objective to find an internship, maybe use the uh, Adopt a Student Program as one way in which you might be able to do that. And the other thing, the other piece of advice is to is to keep looking out for vacancies and internships that are published uh, on our website and are indicated as well through our social media challenge, um, channels. So thank you for your question. Are there any other questions? We don't have any other question. Uh, okay. Well, in that case, Anna, I'll leave you to close up. Thank you, Alistair. Thank you, uh, Henry, Catherine, and Dinos for sharing your experiences with us. We hope that all of this information will be useful to potential board candidates. Uh, we will post this video online today. And thank you all for joining us today and asking your questions. Thank you to everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Thanks. Thank you. Bye.